I welcome to this class where we are presenting some salient points from the current economic survey presented in the parliament for 22-23. We, uh, you are aware that the economic survey is a flagship annual document of the government. It is presented normally a day before the budget is presented and this practice is being continued since 1964-65. It means that till 1964-65 the survey was presented as an integral part of the union budget. But after 64-65 it has been uh, segregated from the budget and presented separately before the budget is presented so that the members of parliament uh, are aware of the situation of the India's economy so that they can make observation comments on the budget keeping in view the overall economic situation of the country. However, uh, if you go by strictly by constitutional provisions, there is no provision for presenting such a survey before the budget or along with the budget and therefore government is neither bound by the representation of the survey nor the government is obliged to uh, abide by the suggestions or recommendations made in the survey. It is completely uh, the discretion of the government to decide or to reject the suggestions made in the economic survey. But following the conventions of the long period, that is since 1964-65 or even prior to that, the survey, uh, the suggestions given the survey are taken into consideration in the budget formulation exercise of the government and most of the projections made in the survey helps in uh, incorporating the various projections uh, made in the budget also. Therefore, the economic survey is really a very, very important document, uh, not only for the government, but for the, the others also, because it presents the overview of India's economy during the current year. Particularly, they take into account the data up to December and therefore the review presented by economic survey is for the period of April uh, to December during the current year. And therefore, the survey facilitates and presents the review of the various sectors like agriculture, manufacturing, employment generation, infrastructure, prices, exports, imports, foreign exchange reserves and money supply, etc. In all these macroeconomic parameters, the survey made the comments. You see that this chart, which I have taken from the Ministry of Finance website, indicate the snapshot view of the economic survey, what survey actually presents. You see that in this chart, the survey presents the, the projected fiscal deficit for the current year. The survey also forecasts inflation if it is important for the economy for a particular year. The survey presents the expected rate of growth of the se sectors like services, industries and agriculture. Survey also presented the overall view of the foreign exchange reserves. And survey also made the projection of the GDP growth for the current year and also make the projections for the forthcoming year. For example, in the current survey, the survey made the projection for the growth for the 22-23 and also made the projection for 23-24. And this is the area where we shall be uh, discussing in uh, the remaining part of the lecture. I will be focusing on the how the survey has made the projections of GDP growth for the current year as well as for the forthcoming year. Normally, as I said, economic survey highlights the, the or reviews the government policy initiatives during the year. They review the performance of the major development programs and the schemes of the government. And they also discuss the prospects of the economy in the short term and the medium term uh, scenarios. Importantly, the most importantly, the survey projects the GDP growth uh, for the current year and provide the outlook for the next year.
and based on the outlook the survey also made the projected gdp growth for the next year for the next year and therefore keeping these uh, uh, the objectives of the survey in view the survey for 22 23 despite the fact that there has been russian ukraine conflict despite the fact that the federal reserve have raised the rate of interest the survey has projected the 7% rate of growth for gdp during the current year and projected slightly lower rate of growth of 6.5% for the next year and therefore this uh, this presentation in this class we are uh, basically discussing the assumptions and the factors which survey has taken into account while making the projection of gdp growth of 7% for the current year and slightly lower rate of growth of 6.5% for the next year and this uh, understanding of these factors will help you in uh, eliminating most of the alternatives in the prelims exam you see that the if you look at the uh, trend growth rate of the gdp from 10 11 till 22 23 this shows that apart from the pandemic period where it was negative uh, 6.6% the rate of growth has been positive but after 15 16 and 16 17 rate of growth is consistently falling consistently falling uh, in india it was only in 21 22 rate of growth turns out uh, seemed to be 8.7% but it was mainly because of the base effect but in 20 23 the 7% projection is not the base effect it means there are certain real factors which uh, make the survey to uh, make the healthy projection of the gdp growth for the current year and therefore uh, we are trying to highlight uh, these important factors which led the survey to make a projection of 7% after the survey is presented and today we also have the advanced estimate of gdp and the the cso or the nso has also uh, uh give the advanced estimate of around 7% of gdp growth during the current year the the major factors highlighted by the economic survey for making such a uh, healthy projection for the current year despite so many uh, negatives uh, will indicate the strength of the india economy the first factor which survey highlighted the saving prospects this the survey says that the gross uh, capital formation has been consistently rising it, it was 11.8% in 2122 uh, as compared to 10.7% last year private sector investment is also picking up in the current year and of course uh, the increase is marginal but the the trends are favorable trends are favorable the gross saving rate uh, is uh, risen to has increased to 30% current year as compared to 29% last year and incremental capital output ratio which measure the efficiency of the use of the resources has also indicated the improvement and uh, the decline i code means the efficiency of utilization of resources is improving given the saving prospects means that the adequate resources are available for making the investment only thing is these resources to be channelized through the the financial markets for uh, uh, through the financial markets for the productive investment and that's why the survey says that as far as resources availability is concerned they are available in ample quantity in ample quantity in the economy the only issue is their channelization the second uh, factor which uh, identified by economic survey is consumption sentiments it uh, the the quoting the the rbi consumer confidence survey uh, which also show the future expectation index or consumer situation index uh, quoting these indices of the rbi survey highlighted that the consumption sentiments have started improving from december 22 onwards it means the domestic demand is picking up domestic demand is picking up and domestic demand which constitute around 50% of gdp 
if it starts picking up, it is a very good uh, news for the India's economy. And apart from the the uh, the RBI survey, survey also quoted the demand which is released, which is released in the uh, in the housing sector, particularly in the real estate market. It is observed that the housing inventories have declined during the year. Means that the sale of the housing units have increased. Prices of the housing units are firming up, and therefore the construction of new units is picking up the pace. And given the fact that the housing sector has the the both forward and backward linkages with other sectors, uh, the improvement in the housing sector means. The al almost 66 sectors will show the improvement in their performance, which will push up the GDP growth. So therefore, consumption sentiments, which the survey has highlighted, will help in uh, pushing up the growth in the current year. Apart from the general housing, the normally construction activity has significantly increased on account of the the significant rise in the capital expenditure of this central government and given the uh, value of the capex multiplier increase in the capital expenditure of the government will increase the the gdp by uh, by multiple times by multiple times in the in the in one of the slide i have given that the correlation coefficient between increase in the gross fixed capital formation and increase in GDP is around 0.98%. It means if the gross fixed capital formation or capital expenditure rises by 1%, the GDP will rise almost 0.98%. And this in this gives the, the signal that rising capital expenditure will push up the growth. And therefore, we say that government is trying to accelerate the growth process via by making the huge capital expenditure and therefore the apart from the central government uh, expenditure government is also giving the 50 years interest free loan to the states to improve their uh, capital expenditure also and therefore the capital expenditure done by the government is not only addressing the infrastructure gaps but it also crowding in the private investment into the uh, system because the, when the government make the lot of uh, capital expenditure investment, the private sector usually usually comes in and take the advantage of government investment. And therefore, the private sector is expected to crowd in uh, on account of the increase in capital expenditure by the government. And therefore, the, the, the increase in the capital expenditure is likely to push up the growth process in the economy. In terms of the data, you see that in 2019-20, the cap capex was 3.39 lakh crores, which was increased to 7.50 lakh crores in 22-23, and it is expected to increase further in the forthcoming year. And this increase in expenditure uh, by the government on capital sets like railways, road ports, airports, waterways, logistics, etc. And investment in these infrastructure projects is likely to improve the overall growth process because it, it is likely to push up the demand, likely to push up the demand for various uh, services and the critical raw materials in the economy. To make it more successful, the 196 projects, uh, particularly infrastructure projects, are uh, put under PM Gati Shakti, which means that they are being monitored at the highest level so that the not only capital expenditure is made but the it is executed in a more efficient way leading to the the rise in the uh, in the in the level of income and the the uh, uh, filling up the infrastructure gap will help in bringing down the logistic cost of the economy which is around 12% vis a vis the 7 to 8% of the world average. And the high logistic cost is not hampering our exports, not hampering their competitiveness in the world market, but also raising the overall cost of the economy. Therefore, the, 
the government is trying to push up the infrastructure uh, investment in most of these sectors which are uh, in fact improving the connectivity and improvement the improvement in the, in the connectivity will bring down the logistic cost and this is a important step in the right direction taken by the government besides that government has also implemented and uh, the two years back the pli scheme high production uh, linked incentive schemes under which 14 sectors have been uh, identified uh, which will get the incentive from the government if they exceeded the production uh, over the target given to them and if the 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 14 sectors uh, exceeded the target then they will get the incentive cash incentive under the scheme but the addition to the output by this sector will directly push up the growth it is expected that the these 14 sector will add their output in the next five years by 30 lakh rupees and if it is uh, it is realized as expected then obviously it will provide a great push to the to the gdp the other important uh, fact highlighted in this survey is the twin balance sheet issue earlier because of the twin balance problem banks were not able to extend the credit to the corporate sector because if corporate sector balance sheet become red the bank's balance sheet also become red but uh, recently the npa in the balance uh, bank's balance sheet has been taken away and uh, given to the the uh, the newly uh, asset restructured company to handle the npa therefore the balance the bank's balance sheet has become almost clean but the corporate sector is also looking buoyant in the current year and they are also going to make the investment and therefore when the balance the twin balance sheet problem has been eased the during the current year the non agricultural credit growth is constant consistently rising blue line indicates the non food bank credit growth which is consistently rising because of the because of the problem of the twin balance sheet is addressed by the government besides that the term lending to non corporate is also uh, is also uh, observed to be growing and therefore the overall credit growth in the economy is is growing which is a indication of the rising investment by the private sector in the current year or in the forthcoming year other important uh, area highlighted by the survey is that most of the international corporations are uh, using the china plus one strategy means if they have to withdraw from the china which direction they should go and in this way they have most of them have identified india as one of the favorite destination for setting up the industries particularly in the low skill unskilled labor intensive manufacturing sectors where we have the comparative advantage if it happens to be true then most of the fdi will be uh, diverted from china towards india and this will also help in pushing up the growth process similarly the the uh, states have also shown the consolidated deficits are declining and their net market borrowings are falling this also help in uh, earmarking the funds for capital expenditure by the states besides that the the robust performance by the agricultural sector will help in checking the price uh, within the control and they will provide adequate stock for the food grains so that if the growth rises demand rises at least price of the food grains do not rise and therefore agriculture growth will help in maintaining in maintaining the uh, high growth rate in the economy center is also uh, the survey is also highlighting the incentives which are being given by the government to households and the other sectors to increase their capital expenditure in construction of homes and accumulation of capital assets and uh, accumulation of capital assets this will also uh, raise the demand in the real estate market which is already looking buoyant in the current year the since the uh, this sustainable development is our goal 
and therefore to attain the sustainable development the government is emphasizing on the ESG that is environment social and governance matrix to maintain the sustainable development the the, uh, the we have to ensure this matrix to happen and therefore in this regard the government is making a lot of efforts to divert the expenditure towards the sectors which are environment friendly which are environment friendly and therefore they are increasing the, uh, the uh, investment in the private sector uh, in the areas such as the solar energy electric vehicles and digital technologies to ensure that the growth is compatible with the environment to make the growth more compatible with the environment the social businesses and farmers producers organizations are also promoted to raise the equity capital from the social stock exchanges and invest in climate smart technologies organic farming and water conservation and water conservation therefore the the trinity of saving investment growth which is already established in economics uh, is being upheld by the economic survey and economic survey is is projecting the growth momentum to achieve the target of 5 trillion dollar economy by uh, 2025 and therefore the the survey has presented survey has uh, presented that uh, uh, in uh, in 22 uh, 23 the growth rate 7% is attainable is attainable despite the three shocks we are we, we are experiencing that is the post implication of covid-19 is still there russian ukraine conflict appeared last year is also disrupted most of the supply chains which affected the uh, output prospects of the india's economy all over the world led by the federal reserve bank interest rates are rising rising the interest rate by the the uh, federal reserve leads to appreciation of the dollar and when dollar appreciate the other currency dep the depreciate and which the depreciation of the currency leads to widening of the current account deficit in most of the importing countries like india therefore despite all these uh, the uh, the uh, obstacles or problems you may call uh, the the projected rate of growth during the current year has been 7% and despite so many negatives the, neg the the rate of growth for the next year is projected to be 6.5% on average and therefore the 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 question is if what the concerns the survey has identified for the indian economy and what are the concerns the survey has identified for the global economy and, and that these concerns you need to know because that will help in understanding the projections made by the survey for GDP for the current year as well as for the next year. And uh, these concerns I am going to discuss in the next class. Again, I welcome to this class where uh, my focus will be to highlight the concerns for the Indian economy. Concerns for the Indian economy may emerge from the domestic economy itself and also may emerge from the global economy. And therefore, uh, we, we are highlighting certain concerns uh, for India's economy. And that is one is obviously inflation. We, we know that because of the Russian-Ukraine conflict, which has started in February 2022, and the the, uh, the uh, uh, supply chains were disrupted, leading to increase in commodity prices, particularly the price of the crude oil, particularly the price of the crude oil, which led to the uh, headline inflation in India above six percent, above six percent during 22, and increase in inflation rate. We know that it led to loss in the purchasing power, it led to worsening of the CAD. It also led to weakening of the rupee and it also led to significant fall in the FER to keep the value of the rupee stable by RBI, uh, in, by RBI through intervention in the exchange market and selling the dollar. 
and therefore the major concern for India's economy is to control the inflation and therefore to control the inflation the RBI has uh, obviously adopted the tight monetary policy and raised the, uh, the policy rate by 228 points in the last uh, 7 to 8 months which also uh, raised the rate of, rate of interest in the economy a rising rate of interest may uh, may be one of the uh, negative point for the private investment to come forward but uh, we have to control the inflation and uh, keeping our monetary policy in consonance with the other uh, monetary policies of the government we also adopted the tight monetary policy and raised the rate of interest but the the uh, the silver lining is that by November, December uh, 2022, the rate of inflation has come down to less than 6%, but it is, it is still, still on the higher side. But we hope that the inflation will stabilize sometime by the middle or third quarter of the next year. The another concern is the rupees exchange rate and foreign exchange reserves. As, uh, I, uh, as I mentioned that because of the rising rate of interest, in the U.S. economy, the capital is flighting, flighting from uh, India and the other emerging countries to U.S. As a result, the current account deficit in these countries is widening, is widening. As a result, we are facing the balance of payment problem. We are facing the balance of payment problem to maintain uh, the the to maintain the exchange rate between rupee and dollar which has uh, touched the 80 rupees uh, per dollar. The RBI had to intervene in the exchange market and by selling the dollar, we are able to maintain the stability in the rupee, which has led to decline in the foreign exchange reserves. The, the third concern, the uh, survey has highlighted that we still, we are still uh, dependent on the imported energy, 85, 86% of our uh, the diesel and petrol demand is met through the imports and this is it is going to continue even in the uh, in the future years and which always led to the widening of the current account deficit the um, tight monetary policy as already mentioned is one of the concern the it is also one of the concern that the government is uh, is trying to a project that the high capital expenditure will raise the uh, employment and reduce the poverty. But under such circumstances, under such uh, special circumstances, the many of the uh, many of the organizations or many of the institutions are raising the doubts in raising the uh, employment and reduction in poverty on account of increasing capital expenditure. Manufacturing sector is a, is a major concern for India's economy because the core sector growth uh, for October was just 0.1%. The IIP uh, slumped to the 26 months low in the month of October and therefore the manufacturing sector is still struggling. The capital utilization in the manufacturing sector has been around 75%. Therefore, unless the manufacturing sector improves, it is difficult to improve the share of industry and manufacturing in the uh, India GDP and the major challenges faced by the manufacturing are highlighted as below and you see that one of the important trend which is emerged in the manufacturing sector is the increasing contractualization of course the employment of regular workforce is rising but within the regular workforce those who are employed without any written uh, contract or without any uh, formal other benefits is rising, which is a cause of concern, uh, at least for the quality of employment, which is emerging in India's economy. Other factors are uh, highlighted here, which need to be uh, addressed if you really want the manufacturing sector to come forward. The other important uh, area uh, which is uh, highlighted as a concern is continuing distress among the MSME. Of course, 
the credit growth to MSME has been very robust. It was over 30% in the uh, 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 during the 22 January November 22, and which is supported by the emergency credit link guarantee scheme of the government. And 83% of the borrowers would avail the the credit under the scheme are micro enterprises, are micro enterprises, and around 50% of them have uh, the raised the loan or have raised the loan up to. 10 lakh rupees only. But the review of the scheme uh, reveals that one out of six loans disbursed under the scheme turn into red, turn into red in just 27 months uh, with the default, with the default being at the lower end. Those who have taken the low amount of loan that is up to 20 lakhs, they turn into red. And therefore the default start rising for the loans which are taken under the scheme of the emergency credit linked guarantee scheme. Therefore, the government has to look into seriously the problem being faced by the MSME sector so that they come out from the distress and perform better. Unless the MSME sector performs better, we cannot improve <coughs> the manufacturing output, we cannot improve the, the export performance and we cannot improve our employment <coughs> employment in the economy. Coming to the global economy, in the global economy, the, the survey highlighted that the global economy is uh, facing the, uh, the high rate of inflation after the Russian-Ukraine conflict. The, 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 uh, as a result, the tight monetary policy is being adopted by most of the central banks. This has created a situation where US dollar has become the strongest in the last 20 years. And the, the global economy is facing the highest global inflation in the last 50 years. And the most aggressive tight monetary policy is being adopted by the central banks in the last 40 years. As a result, the, the global economy prospects are, are perceived to be perceived to be subdued in the forthcoming year 2023 and the Chinese economy is projected to be uh, to be growing at the lowest rate in its last 45 years and therefore given this kind of trend the global economic growth is expected to grow by 2.7 percent in 23 as compared to 3.2 percent in the and uh, 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 and the especially grow 2.7 percent uh, in the forthcoming year as compared to 3.2 percent in the current year, and this fall in the uh, global rate of growth and uncertainties in the uh, the world market, the trade will be affected. Trade will be affected, and the trade is expected to grow only by one percent during the year. Therefore, the fall in the trade and fall in the global um, economic growth will produce a gloomy picture for the forthcoming year, for the forthcoming year. And Chinese economy, which is the second largest economy of the world, is expected to grow only at the rate of 2.7% uh, uh, during the year uh, as compared to 4.5% projected earlier. And the, the the, this kind of slowdown in the Chinese economy is likely to continue in the forthcoming year also. If that is likely to happen, then the world demand is going to fall. World demand is going to fall uh, <clears throat> in the forthcoming year. Our exports, which are directly a function of the rising demand, rising global demand, will face a constraint, will face a constraint. On the other hand, because of the rising GDP in our domestic economy, demand for imports will rise. Demand for imports will rise. And when the demand for imports rises, exports became almost at the uh, plateau level, then current account deficit is likely to worsen in the next year. In next year, it is likely to worsen. And when current account deficit is likely to worsen, it will put pressure it will put pressure on the 
exchange rate and therefore to stabilize the exchange rate the RBI again has to intervene in the exchange market and sell the dollar and therefore the foreign exchange reserves are further likely to come down and this is the 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 projection made by the survey keeping these the uh, these projections the survey says that still in 923-24 the two silver linings are there one is the the solid domestic demand is likely to emerge solid domestic demand is likely to emerge we know that the aggregate demand in any economy is comprised of is a comprise of the the c plus i plus g aggregate demand in any economy is comprised of consumption demand plus investment demand plus government demand plus x minus m and we have seen that x minus m is not going to improve much in the forthcoming year therefore the the consumption demand is likely to uh, pick up as we have seen uh, through the rbi survey and through the projections of the economic survey that consumption demand is likely to pick up and if consumption demand picks up which constitutes around half of the gdp gdp is going to push up and further to improve the g the government is picking up the the capital investment government is pushing up the cap capex in a big way as i said uh, last year government spent the 7.5 lakh crores as the capex in 23-24, the government has projected to spend around 10 lakh crores um, from, this, uh, from the budget of the government of India. Apart from that, the government has also extended 1.3 lakh crores as an interest-free loan for 50 years to the states, so that the, they also push up the capital expenditure in, the, in their respective states. And therefore, the 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 actual investment is expected to be more than 13 lakh crores, which will, which will be around the 37% of the total expenditure of the government. Therefore, these are the two silver lines which are available for 23-24, which will help in maintaining the, the momentum of the growth rate in the forthcoming year. But as we have seen that the global economy is going to present a gloomy picture and therefore the growth rate of the global economy is going to fall chinese rate of growth is going to fall interest rate is going to be very high inflation rate world inflation rate is still going to be very high all these negative factors will push the negative will push the negative uh, uh, factors on our growth process as a result the <laughs> As a result, the, the survey has uh, uh, projected slightly lower rate of growth of 6.5% in the forthcoming year. In the forthcoming year. And by making this 6.5% uh, rate of growth for the forthcoming year, we are assuming that the oil prices are likely to stay low as they are uh, being at present. They are not going to rise further. India's CED. Uh, today is within the manageable limits and we expect that the CED will not cross 3.5% of the GDP in the next year also. And therefore, if these factors are managed by the government of India, then we are able to show that we shall be achieving the 6.5% uh, rate of growth in GDP or even more than that, we, uh, we can attain next year. This is the projection given by the economic survey for the current year as well as for the next year and therefore it is survey has uh, said that the the uh, the indian economy in 23 has nearly recouped what was lost and renewed what had been paused and re-energized what had slowed during the pandemic and uh, since the conflict in the europe and we are now ready to enter into the next financial year with the uh, with the hope that the uh, we are able to maintain the growth momentum and the india's economy will grow uh, at least at the uh, rate of 6.5% per annum 
as I said that the lower projection slightly mainly because of the gloomy picture presented by the world economy. That's why the, the survey has made the lower projection. These projections are taken into account by union budget. When union budget is presented, the, the economic situation as presented by economic survey and the projections made by the economic survey has the uh, has impacted the budget formulation exercise and therefore the allocations uh, in the in the union budget has been in accordance with the advice given by the economic survey for example the survey projected that in the forthcoming year capex is likely to uh, uh, touch the level of 10 lakh crores and in union budget government has announced the 10 lakh crores at a as a capital expenditure Therefore, the many other advices and suggestions highlighted by the economic survey are taken into the budget formulation process. That's why economic survey is considered to be a very important document, not only for the government, but for all others who are interested in understanding the dynamics of India's economy. Thank you very much. Thank you.